does God require from us as believers extraordinary expectation if you are to walk with God and receive great proceeds dividends of Christianity salvation you need to do what? hold your post by your heart if you go to church by natural senses you are likely to return without any miracle some of you you've been in places where the greatest anointing of God was flowing but you went home with your problem the problem is not in the oil you are at opposition before we can go to church we need to have a meeting with ourselves to align ourselves to the celestial order remember a church is not a natural organization as we perceive it our problem when we talk about the church we, we think about the building church is bigger than the building because it is managed regulated by the world and sea do you know that, that the church is not regulated from here everything we see here was initiated in a realm that mankind are not familiar with. Before you were born, something happened in the spirit that is beyond your parents. Tell your neighbor, before you were born, something too deep beyond your parents happened in the spirit realm. There was an assignment of God that had to be fulfilled. And your mother expected you. Yeah? She skipped a period not because your father wanted a child but because there was a need in the kingdom of God. That's why you care. But some of you you are existing ordinarily. That's why the program of God cannot fully administer in your life. Because you are ordinary. The day when you know you are a miracle, you will see miracles. The day when you realize that as a Christian, you are not walking alone, you will start to see the footprint of God marching before you. The problem is because you are not aware. You are not aware. If you do not see it, Elijah said, you cannot have it. The man said, let me have a double portion of your spirit. He said, if you see it, if you see my departure, my ascension, you receive the mantle. In the same manner, if you do not see God in his sovereignty, in the natural, you will never receive the dividends. Christianity is not an idle war as we think it is. It's not a work of religion but it is a divine revelation. Tell your neighbor, Christianity is not an idle war or a religion as we say. It's a divine war. Jesus becomes what we want him to become in our life. If you think Jesus is a silent God, you'll be silent. If you think Jesus is not able to heal you, you remain in sickness, you will never heal you your extent of knowledge and revelation about Jesus will determine what you receive from him. It brings
brings me to the title of the message. Commission requires identity. If we are to walk with God and experience his power, not only must we have information about God, but we need to know who we are in God. The Bible says, Paul wrote miracles. God did great exploits through Paul. He healed the sick. He cast out demons. Demonstrated the power of God through the faculty of this man because Paul was fully identified in Jesus. It means the words of Paul while executing his duty was not just a suggestion or an idle notion but it was a practical divine order whatever that Paul declared the heavens spoke in concert with Paul the Bible said even the handkerchief that came in contact with him would be taken to the sick and they received healing. Demons were cast out just by handkerchief that came in contact with the man called Paul. The Bible say there came a time where imposters wanted to demonstrate alike. The seven sons of Skiva, they looked at this commission of Apostle Paul. They found it very interesting. The Bible say they started on their mission, demonstrated as Paul did. One time, they met demons that understood the law of the celestial world. The Bible say they said, in the name of Paul, Jesus, that he talks about, we command you out. The demon said to them, Paul we know, Jesus we know, who are you? There was what? A question of identity because this man had finally found the authority that understands the spiritual The demons looked at them, they had the words, they had the name Jesus, they had the name of the man that carry identity. But when they looked at them, they did not find identity with Christ. Their identity was questionable because these people were not in relationship with Jesus. But they were in relationship with the commission. Most of us would have fallen in love with the gospel, with the concept of salvation but not with the one that they've sent it. Remember what I said? I said many Christians they have relationship with the Bible but not the God of the Bible. We talk about it. We write about it. We quote scriptures. We use his name to substantiate what we want to address but our identity is in question the bible says the demon possessed man put them on a scale of divinity and they were found wanting it is written they were beaten up the bible says they ran away naked even bleeding because they were not people of identity we need to 
locate our identity in Jesus so that we can be effective in the commission of salvation. Everyone has been commissioned to walk this walk. Every child of God under the sun has been what? Commissioned to do the work for Jesus. Not necessarily ministry. The greatest ministry is your relationship with God. The greatest commission before anything is for you to have what? A love work. We do not have identity in Jesus and we want to do his work. Tell your neighbor, we do not have identity in Jesus but we want to do his job. That's why we are failing. That's why your prayer cannot rise above your height. That's why you shout the name Jesus and bad situation continue to prevail. Because you are a Christian by chance not by revelation most of you you are a Christian by what? by chance not by revelation who is a Christian by chance? the one who knows the word but the word does not know him not only must we know the Bible. The Bible must know us. Are you sure that the Bible knows you? Have a conversation with your neighbor. Are you sure that the Bible knows who you are? Identity. This great commission requires identity in Christ. Not only must you talk about Jesus, but Jesus must be found in your heart. You must have what? A rapport, relationship with Christ to overcome. If we do not find our identity, demons will overthrow our position before God. Demons overthrow their position before God, although they were sons of the chief priests. Their father was what? The chief priest. It means they were brought up in the teaching about God but they did not possess God. You can read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and yet God does not dwell inside of you. You can shout hallelujah, glory be to God. You can post that Jesus is Lord whereas Jesus does not know you. Remember what he said? He said, many will come in my name. They will come and say in the last days, we preach your word. We cast out demons. We motivated people. And he will say, I don't know you. Because there is no identity. When God looks at you, what does he see? That's the greatest question. When the Holy Spirit, Jesus, looks at you, what does he see? Through the eyes of the spiritual, 
Lasimo ya. Are we truly sons of God? Eh? You are not made a son of God, a daughter of God, by how you carry your Bible. The Bible must be alive. Are you sure that when you pray, say, Father, Papa God sees Jesus praying. Because that is the order that is required. That when we say Father, He sees Jesus in us. Are you confident that you are a son of Yahweh? Because Jesus is forever on watch to spot the sons of Yahweh. Are you the son of Yahweh? Daughter of Yahweh? Or when God looks at you, he sees ancestral lineage. Some of you, you are still carrying ancestral connection. On your mouth, you are shouting Jesus. But in the spirit, ancestors are talking. Identity in him. You need it to walk with him and for him to trust you. The Bible says God testified about Job. Not necessarily because Job was a man of wisdom. But when God saw Job, he saw his son. And he said to Satan, have you seen my faithful servant? Because God saw who? Jesus. In Job. And God knows that Jesus will never betray him. And he said, you can go and test him. Because he saw Jesus in the identity. Are you sure that if God can look at you now, you will testify about you? Ask your neighbor. And say, Have you seen my son? in South Africa, South Africa, Botswana, Botswana Namibia, Namibia, Zambia, Zambia Lesotho. Lesotho. Have you seen ah, my son, my daughter? Are you sure? Most of you, you know that you are food for Satan. Before Satan can tempt you, he does not strategize because any hook that he sends, you will catch the bite. Have you seen my faithful servants? Because God saw identity. When you pray, Jesus looks more into who you are than what you do. What made David different from Saul that Saul was destroyed for a simple sin not killing everything that God said he must kill and David committed the greater sin adultery and murder but God still chose to work with David which one committed greater sin here? According to mankind, they will say David. But according to God, the one who did not have identity is the one that committed greater sin. God sympathized with David because David carried what? 
the promise of God, his identity, and Saul did not. That's why he was rejected. When you carry God's identity, you will survive attacks that have killed your neighbors. When you have identity, you will see things that others do not see. You will escape through doors that others were not availed for them. Doors were not availed for them. But because of identity, you will escape. God will sacrifice nations for someone who carry identity. He sacrificed the whole kingdom of Egypt to save the Israelites because they carried what? Identity. God said, let the Red Sea swallow them. Let their firstborn die because of what? God wanted to protect identity.